What do you see on the screen here? You share a screen that shows the Google AI Studio webpage, specifically the stream real time section. It also shows a small video feed at the bottom right of the screen and a red circle with a microphone in the lower left, which indicates the audio is being recorded. Gemini 2.0 is now here. Introducing Gemini 2.0, our new AI model for the agentic era. Just today, Google announced a handful of things featured around their new Gemini 2.0 model. So in this video, I'll quickly go over the blog post and some of the key pieces that they mentioned within here. And then I'll show you how to get started using Gemini today. The first thing to note is this is the first model to be built natively multimodal. There are new advances in multimodality, like being able to natively generate images, as well as have audio output. They also describe that they have native tool use, which will enable you to build AI agents that bring us closer to their vision of universal assistance. Starting today, they're releasing their Gemini 2.0 Flash experimental model. This model is gonna be available to all Gemini users. In terms of some of the technical details for Gemini 2.0 Flash, Flash is built on the success of 1.5 Flash, which is the most popular model for developers. Now with this model, it has similar response times, notably 2.0 Flash even outperforms 1.5 Pro on key benchmarks at twice the speed. 2.0 Flash also comes with new capabilities. In addition to supporting multimodal inputs like images, videos, and audio, 2.0 Flash now supports modal outputs like natively generating images mixed with text and durable text-to-speech or TTS for multilingual audio. Finally, like I mentioned above, it also has a native tool capability like Google search, code execution, as well as third-party user-defined functions. If we take a look at some of the benchmarks, we can see that across a number of different benchmarks that this model outperforms even Gemini 1.5 Pro across a ton of different areas, and in some cases by a pretty considerable margin. So considering that this model is twice as fast as 1.5 Pro, this goes without saying is quite impressive. Within the blog post, they described that they really envision that this model is going to be a bit of a harbinger for creating AI agents. With its ability to follow complex instruction, as well as planning, compositional function calling, native tool use, as well as improved latency, instead of stitching together a bunch of different models and a bunch of different services, what's nice with the Gemini 2.0 Flash model is we're getting to a place where now you'll be able to send in all of your different input, whether it's text, video, audio, or images, and this model is ultimately going to be capable of generating voice so it can respond back to you, as well as generate images, as well as the text responses that we're used to. At Google, they have a number of different internal projects, and they are releasing some of these today where you can sign up for a waitlist to be a trusted user. One of them is Project Mariner. What's interesting with Project Mariner is this is similar to a tool that was popularized by Multion. Think of it as a Chrome extension that allows you to control your browser. So you can give it natural language tasks, and then it will go and research or perform the actions that need to occur for whatever you're asking for. One of the announcements today, but this is behind a waitlist, so you do have to sign up to be able to access this. Now, another one is Project Astra. This was demonstrated during one of their events last year. With Project Astra, it gives you the ability where you can stream in audio as well as video and get responses back in real time from the voice as well as the text as shown within the video. You can imagine a bunch of different use cases for that, right? Holding up your phone, asking what particular things are, maybe asking a question for a piece of homework, or whatever it might be. While Project Astra and the official release isn't available today, I'm gonna to show you a place on how you can try something out very similar within their AI studio. Another announcement that is built on Gemini 2.0 is Jules, which is agents for developers as they're describing here. An experimental AI powered co-agent that integrates directly into a GitHub workflow. It can tackle an issue, develop a plan and execute it all under the developer's direction and supervision. This effort is part of the long-term goal of building AI assistants that are helpful in all domains, including coding. They have a quick little demonstration here where this is similar to some of the other tools that we've seen out there. Devon is one of them that was popularized where this will ultimately be able to tie into your code base and you'll be able to interact with it with natural language and it will perform some of the functions that you typically would. And this tool really looks like a human in the loop coding assistant where you can give it instructions on a particular task it will go ahead and update a particular piece of code similar to some of these things like we've seen in Cursor Agent, Cursor Composer, 
or within tools like Devon. It, it looks similar to something along those lines. It will be interesting once this is more generally available. This video is brought to you by Scrimba, the innovative coding platform that brings interactive learning to life. Dive into a variety of courses from AI engineering to front end, Python, UI design, and much more. Scrimba's game changing feature is their unique Scrim screencast format, which lets you pause the lesson anytime and start directly editing the teacher's code. Their curriculum is built in collaboration with industry leaders, including Mozilla MDN. Hugging Face and Langchain and includes building application with OpenAI's Claude, Mistral models, and guides you on deploying projects to platforms like Cloudflare. While AI tools can assist with coding, a solid grasp of the fundamentals is essential for achieving real experience. Scrimba offers something for everyone from complete beginners to advanced developers, and about 80% of Scrimba's content is completely free. Sign up for a free account today using my link below and enjoy an extra 20% discount on their pro plans when you're ready to upgrade. And then finally, they have some really fun examples on using it for games, playing games and actually interacting with the model and asking questions like, what should I do within the game now? Or what approach should I take given what on the screen? So another thing to note with this model is on the LM arena, which is a place where individuals will go and click their preferred responses between two different models. This scores third across the board. This model even ranks higher than O1 Preview as well as O1 Mini on the LM Arena leaderboard. Effectively, what this is a benchmark where all that it is, there are two responses that come back to users and users will select which response that they prefer. This is a practical use case on how you can rank some of these models because you can see what users ultimately want as an output. The fact that it outperformed even these brand new reasoning models from OpenAI, I think is quite a feat and impressive, especially given that Gemini 2.0 Flash is generally speaking their smaller model. There's also presumably going to be a pro model coming down the pike as well. There's also a blog post specifically for developers. Now, a lot of it is on topics that I've already touched on or that I will demonstrate in just a moment here. I'll link all of this within the description of the video if you are interested. Now, in terms of where you can access the model, right now you can access it within the AI Studio, Vertex AI, as well as from the Gemini web app. In my opinion, the best place to try this out right now with a ton of really cool features is within aistudio.google.com. Within here, there is the typical chat interface where you can use it as if it was something like ChatGPT. But the really cool thing with this is the new stream real-time API. Within this, you can share your screen, you can show Gemini your webcam, or you can talk to the model, which I'll demonstrate in just a sec. Another thing within here is there are these starter apps where you don't even need to pull down a GitHub repo or anything. You can just try out the model to see its capabilities. Here, you can see the 2D bounding boxes. We can see a wall, we can see a shadow, and then we also see origami. They also have an example for points as well as 3D bounding boxes. And then the final example is this starter app, which is really a demonstration of that native tool capabilities. Here we see the recommended place that came back very quickly. We have the location and caption. We have the caption here within the app. And then we also have the city that it's showing within the map. Tell me about somewhere rich with ancient history. We click it, we get the recommended place, and then it quickly renders that visual component on the screen there. Now, the coolest feature of this is arguably the multimodal live API with Gemini 2.0. Let's just demonstrate this here. I'll go ahead and I'll share my screen here and I'll just turn up my speakers. Hopefully you can hear this and I'll say, what do you see on the screen here? You share a screen that shows the Google AI Studio web page, specifically the stream real time section. It also shows a small video feed at the bottom right of the screen and a red circle with a microphone in the lower left, which indicates the audio is being recorded. You can see how something like this could be really interesting, right? Let's say you have your code editor up. You want to ask questions about the code. It will be able to be like an assistant to you by being able to stream in that video. And this is just a quick demonstration of having that audio as well as the text stream back as well with all of these different multimodal inputs. But otherwise, that's it for this video. I'll link everything within the description of the video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.